Okay, sorry about that. I call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone in the room. Welcome everyone at home. Uh, this is the Bangor School Committee regular meeting. Today is Wednesday, February 1st. And if, please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, and we apologize for the delay. Um, without further ado, we have a recognition of the debate state, the debate team state champions. Superintendent Tager. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the Bangor School Committee, I would like to congratulate the Bangor High School speech and debate teams on their first place finish at the state meet held on January 22nd, 2023. I'm proud of the versatility, ingenuity, intelligence and cohesiveness that the Bangor School speech and debate team demonstrates. Programs such as this are made possible by dedicated coaches and a school administrative team that values co and extracurricular participation for all students. I'd like to ask Mr. Matthew Leland to come to the podium and say a few words and introduce the team members. Thank you, Matt, and congratulations. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, the team has worked hard this year and in the last year. Uh, I had big shoes to fill taking over for Coach Pelletier, who uh, coached the Bangor team for, I, I'm pretty sure, well over 20 years. Uh, and um, in the post-COVID season, we had a, a regrowing year. Uh, so um, this year, our team is mostly quite young. Uh, with uh, only uh, a few uh, seniors who will be graduating and uh, only a few juniors where a lot of our students uh, are coming in as sophomores and freshmen. Uh, so the team has a long way to go from here as well. Uh, so uh, I'll start by introducing uh, the three team captains that we have here who are also uh, competing. Um, I'm going to bring, huh? bring everybody up also. Okay. <laughs> So if you want to call names, sure. All right. Um, so I, I would like to first recognize the hard work that was put in by uh, our three team captains, uh, Emily Rutherford, the captain for our Congress team, uh, who has helped to rebuild the Congress team from um, almost from scratch, as there were only uh, two members of Congress at the beginning of the year, and now. We have about six members of Congress uh, who, uh, with some significant enthusiasm, who will take over from there in the following years. Uh, we have uh, also our captains, uh, Lizzie Shum and Caitlin Keller, uh, who have uh, taken over as captains, even though they're only sophomores, just due to uh, the large number of seniors that graduated last year. And um, with, uh, with their support, we've managed to build our numbers and build the talent of the new debaters uh, in our team for uh, for this particular season and for hopefully the coming years as well. Uh, so um, <laughs> there, are, there are two uh, certificates here for myself and Coach Hendricks for the speech team, um, but um, not, uh, not present here today, we have uh, Maddie Carroll, who uh, placed fifth in uh, novice poetry at her first tournament ever, uh, and that being the state championship. And also Joey Rutledge, who was, uh, who was essentially uh, judged to be the fourth funniest high school student in Maine, um, also on his very first attempt. Um, <clears throat> and uh, our first certificate for people who are here, we have uh, Emily Rutherford. Please come forward. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Braden Sloan, uh, who uh, placed fifth in junior varsity. Uh, also not, uh, not present today, we have Beatrix Foster, who uh, placed uh, third in junior varsity. And uh, we have uh, Juliana Venturelli, a freshman who placed third in varsity. Uh, Caitlin Kelleter, 
who placed uh, second in varsity. You're welcome. And uh, Elizabeth Shum, who uh, placed uh, first in varsity, being the uh, Lincoln Douglas State Champion for the state of Maine. Uh, as well as uh, our other competitors who are also not here today, uh, Darcy Lees in Congress and Madison Rockwell also in debate. So, congratulations to all of you. You've, you've earned your state championship, and thank you very much. Okay. Congratulations once again. On to adjustments to the agenda. Are there any, Superintendent Tager? Yes, I have one adjustment to the agenda, E1C1A, which is personnel teacher nomination. Okay, can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? No, nope. all in favor? Passes 6-0, thank you. Okay, next to public comments. And just a quick reminder, members of the public may address the school committee for up to three minutes on school and education matters. Complaints or allegations concerning specific employees or students will not be allowed, but will be addressed through established policies and procedures. Public comments shall be directed to the school committee and be brief and not repetitive. The school, the school committee's practice is not to respond or debate with speakers during the public comment period. The superintendent or his staff will follow up on comments outside of the meeting as appropriate. Before starting, please state your name and place of residence. And do we have any public comments tonight? Yep. Please come on up. Welcome. Hey. Hi there. Um, I'm Dave Armstead. My wife Susan Bennett Armstead is with me. And we are five of our six children either are or have been students in the Bangor School Department. And we are residents over here on Broadway. Um, so we're, we're here to tell a really good story, if that's all right. So our youngest daughter, Annabelle, is eight years old, and we adopted her after, be, after being her foster parent for a year. Um, like any kids coming through the foster system, she has some issues, and one of the issues that she had is she's completely nonverbal, so we never know really what she's thinking. Uh, scary sometimes as a parent, and we never know if she's afraid or we know sometimes if she's happy because she has a great smile. Um, she's now in second grade. And since the very first day of kindergarten, she has been deathly afraid of school buses. I mean, they're loud, you know, and they make noise and, and they're kind of weird and smelly and no offense to bus drivers, but you know. So, and that started on the very first day of kindergarten where she had a hard time. It was COVID, it had, had a hard time with all the processes and she couldn't do it. She was so afraid she would run, if she got within 40 yards of a school bus, she would run away. I couldn't look at them. And the, and I'm gonna get emotional, so sorry. But the, the teachers at 14th Street and the administrators at 14th Street School have been working with her for two years, for three years now, really, two and a half. And, um, and we got, and they, would get her close to a bus, they would take a few steps closer, they got her within a couple of doors. And then when we came back from Christmas break, um, her teacher, Tracy Reardon said, I think we can do this. I think, you know, she did have one, um, because it was a concert at the high school, they tried as an experiment, let's ride with all your classmates over to the high school and it went successfully. And so then they thought they would ride, they would try out her coming home on the bus. 
And so I drove over to the school and I was kind of spying on them from a distance with my phone to take pictures as a proud dad. But sure enough, they they took her to the school, to the bus, and she got on and it went great. And I know it's a really simple thing. As parents of kids with special needs, these are gigantic achievements just to be normal, just to do what other kids are doing. You okay. <laughs> she overcame so much just to ride the bus. Would not have happened without 14th Street School. Yeah. So you need to know that because she wasn't riding the bus, every morning I had to drive both her and her sister to school every day for three years because of the timing of things. And what has happened now is she now drives to school on the bus and comes home on the bus completely independently. And we wanted to just restate that the excellence that you all strive for for Bangor School Department doesn't always look like grades. Sometimes it looks like these huge achievements in these tiny moments. And we wanted to thank you for your support. And I really want to shout out for the special education department that doesn't always get the recognition that they should get. We've been nothing but blessed by this school district. Thank you. She gets off the bus smiling and waving at the driver every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Wow. Okay. Must I compose myself? <laughs> Couple teary eyes. Thank you. <laughs> I love those kinds of stories. Okay. Um, next, superintendent's proposals and updates. First, um, we have action items. Um, actually, we don't have action items. We have a couple of informational items. We have the update on best buddies. Yes, thank you, Chair. Director of People Services, Christy Babin, will provide you with the best buddies update. It's going to be hard to follow that story. <laughs> <laughs> um, an amazing one. Um, at the last meeting, uh, Member Luciano asked us to provide you on an update on the Best Buddies program. In August, Mr. Tager and I met with Katie Bryden and Sarah Luciano um, to discuss the Best Buddies program. And for those of you who don't know what Best Buddies is, it's a global nonprofit dedicated to inclusion for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The goal of the program is to empower people with disabilities by helping them form meaningful friendships with their peers, secure successful jobs, live independently, and feel valued in their society. In our conversation in August, we determined that the Bangor School Department does many of these things already, but why not make it formal and include the Best Buddies organization? Um, so we decided to target Bangor High School, Down East Elementary School, and Vine Street Elementary School. At Bangor High School, I'm proud to announce that the Student Council approved a Best Buddies Club, and they had their first meeting this, e this afternoon. Um, both of those students would like to come in the spring and give you an update on how that has gone over the course of the next semester. So that's good. We also had three mentor students in our Project Transition Program that signed up to be Best Buddies um, formally. So trying to get that off the ground and running at the high school, um, and that, that's the school that has really formalized it the most at this point in time. Down East Elementary School, Sarah Vickers has worked with her 21st century coordinator, and they plan to do a Best Buddies after school program beginning this semester. And at the Vine Street Elementary School, Lynn Silk has met with Katie, and they're looking forward to the spring at starting something in their building. So, any questions? No? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much for that was very thorough. So it's like I mean, just a little slow there. Um, thank you. It was really thorough. I appreciate that. You're so, welcome. Excited to see how this goes. Next, we have an update of Special Olympics. Special Olympic co-coordinators Jason Pagburn and Kendrick Perry will share Special Olympic events for the school year 22-23. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, when I was speaking with Jason, um, we have found out that we haven't had Special Olympics since 2020. We have just recently, because of COVID, been able to start up again. Um, 
I know the principals are probably tired of all my tagging of emails, so I apologize. But I'm trying to get as many athletes as possible to start um, realizing that Special Olympics um, has started up again. Jason is in charge of K through 5, and myself, I'm doing 6 through 12 for Bangor schools. Um, we have already been able to have a 10 pin um, event on October 6, and it was pretty exciting. I was able to get 11 high school athletes um, to participate, and for the first time reaching out, I thought that was good numbers. Um, on January 24th, we were able to have candle pin bowling, and it was exciting because we got the K-5 schools. We had 13 participants. Um, I had aspirations program. I had seven, and then I had four participants from the multi-handicap where we were able to provide um, the ramps so they could participate as well. And all athletes have been able to receive ribbons at the event and go home very excitedly. Um, on February 14th, we are excited because we have winter games coming up. They had the chance of doing skiing activities or snowshoeing. Um, Jason has been able to get 20 athletes from the K to five to sign up. And I have 11 from the high school. My goal is for next year to get the word out more so maybe parents will feel more comfortable allowing their um, students to participate in these type of activities. This is gonna be held at the um, Herman Mountain. We have been collaborating with head classroom teachers and staff assigned as coaches. Uh, we've been communicating back and forth. There's a good sized packet, about 11 pages, that we have to have all athletes have signed, everything from medical forms to COVID forms to consent. And um, it's been a lot of paperwork back and forth. Uh, Jason and I, once we get our paperwork, we then send it to the state. And they tell us who's missing what. And then we work hard with the principals, the teachers, um, even social workers have stepped in and helped us get missing paperwork. Because it's really tough when you have to tell an athlete, sorry, your paperwork wasn't provided. So we have to say, you know, that you can't. Um, join us. So our goal or my goal is that by next year, I have all paperwork for um, all the athletes within the 6 through 12 program. So when an event comes up, I already have all updated paperwork. And I've been working really hard with a lot of the sending schools um, in Bangor who can help me get that accomplished for the parents. Um, we have been able to get qualifying scores from their previous years because we found out that was one of the most difficult things. You need qualifying scores to be able to participate. So thankfully, people have had good records and have saved them from the years past. We have reached out to PE teachers who have also helped us get um, qualifying scores of either set up bowling activities or um, snowshoeing activities for us to get them. So it's been a lot of work from everyone, but um, it was really exciting, their first event. It was like they saw friends that they haven't seen since 2020, and it was more of a social event besides just bowling because they were so excited to see old friends. And we had one girl from another school district who she was the only one. She recognized Bangor school students we let her join in with us, and she sat herself right in between everyone and talked the whole entire time with them. <laughs> you would have thought she was one of the Bangor School students. So it was a great um, moment for all of them, and I'm really excited that we get to participate in this again. Is there any questions for Jason or I? 
If I could just say thank you for your support for these athletes and these students to come out. It was a nice success story to hear from the Armisteads earlier, and it's nice that we can provide these types of opportunities um, for students in our schools. So we appreciate that, and the staff has been great working with us teachers mm -hmm. and PE teachers to, to have those athletes trained and ready for the events. Thank you. Yes. Thank you both so much for thank this you. information. Yeah, and what I would love to see too is some like maybe pictures and... Yes, I took um, this picture on the sheet that I handed out. Um, someone from Special Olympics of Maine actually posted it on their website. So I was able to um, put it on here. One of the things I would like to look into is see who has their picture um, release sign so we can take more pictures and maybe during one of the monthly um, emails that we get provided to all staff, we could do something with the Special Olympics and those pictures of those athletes trying. So that's something that's that I'm hoping to work on. Oh, Member Mundell. Yeah, thank you. It sounds wonderful. Um, quick question. Do you interface with um, the unified programs? I'm, I'm, I, I'm not clear on what we do in Bangor with the unified um, athletics programs. Or is that something totally separate? Uh, Paul, okay. Question for Paul. Do you want to talk about that, Paul? Uh, yeah, uh, Unified is a separate initiative. And uh, this is, I don't know the which consecutive year we're in, but for several years, we've had a unified basketball program that plays a regional schedule. They have a, they have a, a broader and larger competitive schedule. And they've, uh, an increasing number of schools have opted for a regional more controlled schedule that's uh, doable for students. So we have four games. I have one set. Uh, we do a home and home with Brewer, and there's an event at the end of the year that doubles up as sort of a regional fundraiser and awareness that we do around Robin. So we have uh, two coaches that are uh, taking that on, and uh, the rosters will round out. So uh, the idea is the, the Brewer event and the Bangor event, obviously, uh, Rams versus Witches. The rivalry is alive and well. We fill the gym, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun, and it's great to see. So we try to make it uh, nice home and home. And then um, for a lot of the students to travel on the weekend to have that type of uh, alteration to how they experience school, it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of preparation. So uh, two games is really uh, about for that in that type of competitive environment is uh, is a. a pretty involved endeavor. So we're, we're really happy. We think we've right-sized it and it's the right kind of program for Unified for Bangor. Thank you, Thank you so guys. much. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay, on to 2023-2024 school committee meeting schedule. Yes, I've enclosed a draft of the 2023-2024 school committee meeting schedule, so you have that in your packet. Thank you. On to business action items. The first action item we have um, are the minutes for the regular meeting of January 25th, 2023. I'm recommending approval of the draft minutes of the January 25th, 2023 regular school committee meeting. Second. All, any questions? First, any questions, comments? No, all in favor. Passes 5-0, thank you. Next, financial report for the reserve amount. I'm recommending approval to put $555,700 into the reserve account to reduce the need for a tax commitment and additional budgeted funds for minor capital projects. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. And second? Second. Any questions or comments? Member Mundell. Yeah. Um, Superintendent Tager, could you just give us a little bit of context about what this means exactly? Um, I can. Jerry, do you mind coming up? Hi there. So this is um, June 2022 is my third year in close since I've been on board. And for the first two years, we actually have done the same thing. So we look at the year in financials and look at bigger projects that would um, not mesh well, so to speak, with the um, budget. They, they tend to be too large, and we try to reserve them to take that um, edge off, if you will. So this year, we were looking forward to um, 
uh, several projects and put together a schedule that's in your packet, and I can go through them if you like. But we were the ticket the ticket item on each one is rather large, and it would be um, problematic to fit into a, a normal school year budget. Um, so we're trying to do what we can while we have uh, available funds to uh, accomplish needed um, capital improvements that we know are going to happen down the road. One of the examples is the Mary Snow School, where we're having some brick work done, and the right. price is going to be a little bit more than we probably imagine. It's sort of like a rainy day fund, I guess, with funds that we have that we can use. So the, so the Mary Snow's brick project was just the contractor without fees or any thing extraordinary they find as they're going through the project was six hundred thousand dollars which is um a big number so we were trying to reserve half with the 22 budget and then come up with the other half in the current year budget and be able to do that without having to bond further so i guess my question was are these funds coming from other programs um where where are the funds actually coming from so you obviously vote on the budget mm -hmm. we go through the school year if um, there are funds available at the end of the year and I listed um, several categories that just didn't play out the way we had put together um, I started off the list with ed tax ed tax are lately are notoriously hard to fill all the positions so we had some um, unfilled and that generates some positive numbers at the end of the year. And I'm able to do um, some capital projects. Um, and we do them during the summer, but these are beyond that. So we, we take those funds. We don't take it away from any program or any position. They're simply funds that weren't expended according to our plan that we laid out. Okay, great. So it's just kind of a way of smoothing out the expenses over time. It is. And, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. So um, we have not voted. So all in favor. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Next, on to personnel, and we have nominations of a teacher. Recommending approval of the following teacher nomination for the school year 2022-2023 with the one-year probationary contract, Nathaniel Colby, K-8 special education teacher, Bangor Regional Program. Motion, please. So moved. Second. All in favor. Passes 5-0. Thank you. And then we move on to second reading of policies. We have revised... Of oh, the extra duty. Here, the extra duties. Yep. Okay, I didn't see it on here. Yep. So, okay. okay, so we have um, extra duty assignments. Thank you, Chair. I'm recommending approval of the following extra duty assignments for the school year 2022-2023. Suzanne Whitmore, IEP Coordinator, Point Six Six Vine Street School. Jenna Hope, B Softball Coach, William S Cohen School. Caleb Tipton, A, A Baseball Coach, James F Dowdy School. Motion, please. Is that moved? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on to second reading of policies. We have revised policy IGBD, program for multilingual learners, and revised policy JHCE, pediculosis, head lice. Recommending approval of the second reading of policies revised policy IGBD, program of multilingual learners, and re revised policy JHCE, head lice. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Passes 5-0. Thank you. Next, we have introduction items. We have a first reading of a policy, revised policy ICA 2023-2024 school calendar. I'm recommending first, recommending first reading of the following revised policies, revised policy ICA 2023-2024 school calendar. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Any initial comments, questions? No? All in favor? Passes 5-0, thank you. Moving on to committee updates, but first, any comments or questions from the committee? Okay, seeing none, we move on to representatives' reports. Any representatives' reports? 
Nothing? No? Nope. Member Surratt? It's not really a report, but just an announcement that there'll be a DEIB advisory committee meeting tomorrow, Thursday at 3.30. Perfect. I'll see you there. Um, and Member Sada, do you have a student committee member update? Just quick things, but um, last night and tonight, there is student ambassadors at the high school who are doing parent nights so that families can come in and learn about the high school and engage with department heads. Uh, the teachers that are staying tonight, they, they're they staying pretty late, but they're very committed and they're very, um, they're engaging with the people who are coming in. So it's it's really good work. And in addition, the student council is planning a winter festival to add some excitement in these months. So I think it's going to be right before February break, but students will be able to engage with some winter games and carnival themed things and that will be exciting. So that's all. Thank, Thank you. you. And a lot of gratitude and appreciation for all of our high school teachers because I know the community members are really excited about that. I saw a lot of um, chit chat on social media. <laughs> Okay, so no reports, correct? Um, and then we have several informational items. We have important dates. Friday, February 10th, 2023 is our school committee members retreat from 830 to 1230 at Camp Jordan. Wednesday, February 15th, 2023, regular meeting 7 p.m. here in council chambers. Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, regular meeting 7 p.m. council chambers. Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023, regular meeting, 7 p.m. Council Chambers. And our second retreat will be on Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023, um, 8.30 to 12.30 in Camp Jordan as well. Any final questions and or comments from the committee? Member Mandel. Yeah, I just wanted to um, make a comment as a follow-up to the presentation that was made a couple weeks ago about the the scoreboard. Um, I um, I have been thinking about this for a couple weeks and given it some um, reflection and I talked to Superintendent Tager and Chair Hassan about um, my concerns about this. Um, I, I think when we had the presentation, I think I was in a little bit of shock to hear the price tag on the project. <laughs> and although I know we're not paying for it out of our funds and the plan is to to raise funds for that, I am concerned about um, spending our staff time um, on an effort like that when I see other gaps in other extracurriculars that are not athletic related. And I admit to being a bit biased here because I um, have one kid who's graduated who was not really an athlete and another kid who's not an athlete who's uh, currently at the school and um, uh, seeing like the robotics program for instance that my son is involved in um, is just getting off the ground but the the um, the advisor to that program is not being paid this year and she has been putting in just an incredible incredible amount of time and effort working with these kids and this is this is like a sport robotics. Um, so uh, I guess my concern, you know, and also I know you know we have a STEM academy, we have a VPA academy, the theater program. To my <laughs> my understanding is that they didn't go to um, the uh, the spring dramatic theater festival. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, um, choir hasn't gone to. Boston for a while and they used to go to Boston. So my concern is, you know, kind of the optics of this, what it looks like to spend almost half a million dollars on a scoreboard um, when I think there are other programs that are equally deserving of staff effort into getting extra funding. Um, I was, uh, I headed up the VPA boosters program before I got on school committee. And we had parents working very hard. Um, I think we raised about seven thousand dollars over a year or two, and um, and with, without any help from the department. So I would just like to see um, a little bit more balance. And um, I don't know what that would look like, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate you. your comments, um, Member Mandel, and, and we certainly. We'll be having some ongoing conversations because we're into the budget season now, so we'll be having a, a lot of 
um, commentary and, and um, good conversations about what we want to spend our money on. This is outside of the budget, but I do understand the optics that you're talking about. So I certainly will will give this some thought and get, and get back with you on that. I, I can tell you within our, our policy that it's not something that we would um, vote on other than we would vote on if there were sponsors to make sure that they were approved and, and followed within our school um, committee policies. But however, I do understand what you're saying about optics and we'll, we'll think about it and get back with you. Yep. Thank you, Member Mundell. I appreciate the thoughtfulness too behind your comments. Um, adjournment, motion please. So, so moved. moved. <laughs> Can I get a second? second. All righty. All in favor. All right. Passes 5-0. Thank adjourned. you. <laughs>